Hello, dear colleagues. Today we continue our course about medical decision support systems based on artificial intelligence. And today we'll talk about medical ethics and especially about ethics in clinical data. This model is aimed at studying the ethics of clinical research. And uh, uh, we will discuss the any uh, what are the role of artificial intelligence technologies in healthcare and uh, why we need to clearly distinguish the development of models algorithms prediction tools and so on from the routine use of these tools in medical practice as a decision aid or a screening tool uh, we can use these tools to study and uh, develop new models uh, where we have artificial intelligence under the hood and uh, an activity that is uh, usually structured uh, could be used and the primary goal here will be production or uh, generalization of knowledge in clinical practice we'll have application of uh, proven or accepted artificial intelligence tools, models and algorithms in various aspects of standard clinical practice or operations. Activities could be aimed at uh, benefiting individual patients and the purpose of these events is to help diagnose, prevent disease or provide treatment for individual patients. And uh, uh, we need to understand that uh, it's uh, a it's known from uh, ancient history that uh, uh, we need to make everything we can to improve our life being and how healthcare could be helpful here to improve this uh, situation and uh, uh, conducting experiments with uh, human participants to evaluate the effectiveness of a new drug or treatment procedures based on the results obtained uh, has been known in western civilizations uh, for a long time we always conducted experiments and uh, it's a major way to gather knowledge and uh, uh, as a something to mention, we can provide uh, examples of experiments found in the works of Greek and Roman and Arab doctors. And uh, according to legend, legends, the oath dating back to the direct descendants of Asclepius uh, passed from mouth or to mouse to the family tradition and it was a first written down by Hippocrates from 3rd century BC and it exists in the form of a document called uh, Hippocratic Oath and uh, it's uh, with the, uh, it is a title for the whole history of medicine and uh, this document for formulates basic ethical principles principles uh, some which essentially define the principles of conducting experiments on humans uh, that are in effect to this day and the uh, principle of medical confidentiality respect for the patient's right to confidentiality the principle of uh, caring for the benefit of the patient and uh, dominant interests of the patient principle of non-infliction of harm and its most known principle from this also and the <clears throat> uh, next principle will be to uh, not inflict injustice and uh, in 18th century physician Edward Jenner was the first to use vaccination to combat infectious disease his uh, cowpox vaccination studies were initially received with a great distrust and of course went against what we know what we now understand as basic human rights in scientific research to be fair these rights were not even defined at that time 
He published his results of 25 years of research and the results of observation of 23 cases of vaccination, including uh, the case on his own 11 months old son. Louis Pasteur spoke about the need of obtaining uh, comprehensive data from studies using animals before starting experiments with humans. His most famous achievement in the fight against infectious diseases was immunization against rabies. Initially, Pasteur conducted experiments only on animals, and he started. Uh, he stated uh, that he wasn't ready to conduct research on humans. Only the urgent need to find a way to treat the patient led him to carry out his first experiment involved humans in 1885. Medical research took enormous leaps in the 20th century and uh, 20th century and uh, they are driven by rapid advances in methodology improved measurements precisions uh, precision of measurements and uh, rapid development of new scientific principles however human experiments uh, conducted uh, to be uh, continued to be conducted in many countries, such as uh, <clears throat> uh, Turkish syphilis study, which was conducted from 1932 to 1972 by U.S. Department of Health and Research in Nazi concentration camps during World War II, and uh, medical research took enormous leaps and uh, after that, uh, following the Nuremberg, uh, Nuremberg Tribunal in 1947, voluntary informed consent uh, research was required to be taken from all participants. And the uh, United Nations and the World Health Organization have continued to develop this direction, focusing on the priority of the well-being of one person over the interests of a wide range of patients. In 1964, the uh, World Medical Association published and uh, continued to develop and uh, amend the Declaration of Helsinki, a guide for clinicians who conduct scientific research involving human subjects. In uh, uh, 1974, the United States carried the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects participating in biomedical and uh, behavioral research. The report of this commission issued in 1978 uh, and it's known as Report Belmont. It consider, uh, coincides significantly with the Declaration of Helsinki. Report Belmont is, uh, the, is basis for the regulatory system uh, governing human subjects uh, involved in research in the United States. It set out three basic uh, principles for conducting research with human participants. Respect for people. The requirement to respect the autonomy of uh, participants who are able to make their own decisions. Provide protection for people with disabilities. The term Autonomy in this case has three interpretations. Autonomy is, a, in a broad sense, the ability of people to make their own laws in the light of reason. Autonomy from the ethical point of view, recognizing the right of people to make choices that reflect their values and interests. Autonomy in research, it will be uh, involvement in research for participants which uh, must make an informed decision about whether they want to participate in the activity or not. 
benefits from this are a fundamental uh, principle of uh, medical ethics that widely applied to biomedical research. Uh, possible benefits should be maximized and uh, possible harm should be minimized as far as it is possible. Justice. Uh, equitable distribution of the benefits and the challenges of research. And uh, this uh, will focus on uh, how uh, to treat similar cases and uh, uh, that we need to treat similar cases in the same way. It will be distribution of fairness and procedural fairness. It's uh, far to say that uh, together these principles and their application are key to understanding the requirements for the ethical development of new artificial intelligence tools. At the same time, the report uh, itself criticized by uh, many and most importantly, it doesn't provide any guidance on how to deal with situations that require a compromise between these uh, principles, since the principles are not ranked anyhow. Ethical principles, principles are intended to both protection uh, for research participants and uh, ensure the uh, objectivity of research which is being conducted, along with, along with various codes and norms for ethical research, such as declaration of Helsinki, a number of general principles exist today. And uh, uh, for example, uh, this declaration was created by a World Medical Association as a set of ethical principles for the conduct of medical research involving human subjects. It uh, includes research on biological materials or data that allow the identification of the person from whom they were obtained. Here and below, uh, we can find all the information on this association. The Declaration of uh, Helsinki recognizes the need for scientific research involving human subjects. At the same time, according to the par paragraph 8 of the Declaration, while the main goal of medical research is to obtain new knowledge, this goal should never prevail over the rights and interests of individual research subjects. Medical research must be conducted in accordance with ethical standards that ensure respect for all research subjects and protection of their health and rights. In this case, responsibility for the subject rests with the doctor or other medical worker. Even if the subject has uh, given his consent, uh, it will be on the uh, shoulders of the doctor anyway. Subjects injured as a result of participating in research should be guaranteed appropriate compensation and treatment. It's also the responsibility of the physician to take into account both national and international ethical and legal norms and research standards. Medical research involving human subjects may only be conducted when the importance of the purpose of the research outweighs the risks and uh, inconvenience to the research subjects. Measures must be taken to minimize these risks. Risks must be continuously monitored, assessed and documented by researchers. Physicians shouldn't participate in research involving uh, human subjects unless they are confident that the potential risk have been adequately assessed and can be adequately controlled. 
if the risks are determined to outweigh the expected benefits of a particular outcome of the study uh, and uh, become apparent clinical clinicians should evaluate whether to continue change or stop the study immediately some individuals and groups are particularly well vulnerable and may be more likely to experience injustice or further harm all vulnerable individuals and groups must receive special protection Medical research involving vulnerable groups of people is justified only if it is relevant to the needs and the priorities of providing medical care to this particular category of people and can be carried out with the participation of people who are not included in the valuable group, vulnerable group. In addition, this category of individuals should benefit from theoretical and practical knowledge or a new intervention method obtained as a result of this study. Before commencing a study, the protocol must be submitted to an appropriate ethics committee for review, comments and recommendations and after all approval. It must take into account the laws and regulations of the country or countries in which the research is to be conducted, as well as the relevant international norms and standards which, however, mustn't de decrease from the override and uh, detract from the protection for research subjects and uh, they should be in correlation with the Declaration of Rights. The committee should have the power to monitor ongoing research and the investigator is required to provide the committee with the information necessary for such monitoring. In particular, information about any serious adverse events should be monitored. No amendments to the protocol may be implemented without committee review and approval. After completing the study, researchers must submit a final report to the committee, containing a summary of the study's findings and conclusions. Participation as uh, research subjects of uh, Persons capable of giving informed consent must be voluntary. Also, uh, consultations with uh, relatives or social group leaders may be appropriate in some cases. No person capable of giving informed consent should be included in the study unless they have given their own free consent. If the potential research subject is a person who is unable to give informed consent, the physician must obtain the informed consent uh, of his legal, from his legal representatives. Such individuals should not, shouldn't be included in the studies that are not likely to benefit them, unless the study is conducted to improve healthcare for the population of which the potential subject is a representative and cannot be replaced by research on individuals capable of giving informed consent. And uh, also it needs to be involving only minimal risks and inconvenience, inconveniences for this subject. Research involving subjects who are physically or mentally incapable of consenting, such as unconscious patients, uh, may be conducted only in the uh, physical or mental condition preventing informed consent is an inherited characteristic of the study for this population. In such cases, the physician should seek informed consent from the legal representatives of this patient.
if such a representative is not available and if patient uh, enrollment cannot be delayed the study may be conducted without obtaining informed consent provided uh, that a uh, specific reason for enrollment of the subject uh, should be uh, a specific protocol or a specific study and it was approved by ethical committee and uh, consent from subjects of uh, uh, the legal representative will be required from a uh, uh, to continue with the study and uh, uh, they may be, there may be of course uh, exceptions where obtaining consent for such research is impossible or impractical in such cases the study can only be carried out after review and approval by the ethics committee There are a number of tasks where intelligent solutions uh, should uh, the best uh, provide the best results for this area. Examples of such research using artificial intelligence include using deep learning methods to identify and understand new pharmacogenomic combinations, development of uh, predictive algorithms and models for patients who are indicated for aggressive palliative irradiation, development of tools for identifying neoplasms on radiological images, development of tools for processing health insurance claims, and so on. Uh, developing new tools for healthcare require obtaining data without which it's impossible to train these intelligent systems. Intelligent solutions and systems in the field of personalized and precision healthcare are increasingly associated with big data concepts and uh, uh, it will implement uh, personalized treatments and uh, interventions for each individual patients and uh, of course here we also will require additional large amounts of data from various sources to understand why patients respond differently to the same therapy or have different side effects in their profiles so uh, where can we get data for research into uh, which we will need uh, to have to develop such smart uh, solutions. The first thing that comes to mind is uh, accessible research repositories containing research datasets and uh, there are several uh, of such uh, repositories and also uh, we can find uh, genomic projects, uh, for example, Biobank in United Kingdom and uh, uh, data recycling is uh, the way to allow us to repurpose this information for training in intelligent systems. Also, we can benefit from electronic health records insurance claims and so on and finally we may have access to users data collected outside of healthcare industry these data are convenient because uh, none of the mechanism of uh, supervision and regulation apply to them such data may include uh, data collected from wearable devices such as smartwatch, so fitness bands and so on, mobile health applications, consumer genomics data, uh, which we can receive directly from consumers, uh, and uh, other ways to detect computer usage information.
to organize research repositories that involve secondary use of data, we need to resolve one ethical conflict. The fact is that this data is usually collected through interactions with a person who has given informed consent to participate in the study. That the data is already the result of interaction between the patient and the researcher dealing with a specific problem. At the same time, the secondary use of data in full compliance with the principles of the Declaration of Helsinki implies obtaining repeated consent, and so on for each study conducted. But we are well aware that in most cases this is an impossible task, and uh, uh, obtaining new consent for each patient for each use of data is usually impossible. To resolve such an ethical conflict, the option of voluntary informed consent, which has expanded information fields, is well suited. According to this concept, study participants must provide the following information. Known risk data, so they understand risk related to this data provision. Information about any expected benefits. Detailed information about confidentiality. Confirmation of voluntary participation in the study. And the signed document must include explicit information about whether data can be used for profit and whether the researcher can share the data with third parties. At the same time, the use of data contained in the research repository has a number of weaknesses. We can cannot obtain the patient's consent of medical interventions if we need it. In addition, we need to take additional efforts to ensure information security, uh, to present patient's uh, privacy, of course. Finally, efforts uh, will be required to maintain the principles of fairness. The fact is that research data contained in public research repositories often contains bias regarding the location of that data collection and, as a result, certain bias regarding gender, age, ethnicity and other aspects. Those Data from US repositories most often presents a cross-section of information reflecting data on representatives of the middle class or wealthy people of European descent, since they are the only, who, only ones who are treated in uh, research and university centers that collect this data. The use of this data may result in the creation of a biased, uh, for example, ethnically unfair artificial intelligence systems that will not produce reliable results for the population as a whole. Supplementing such datasets with information from underrepresented in the original population uh, would be a good solution in terms of uh, improving the datasets. The industry has uh, some promising improvements in this area, but the question remains whether research repositories can even be truly representative for the public. Many artificial intelligence studies use data collection for non-research purposes. For example, electronic health record data, insurance claims data, uh, dry blood spots of newborns, uh, census data, and so on. Obtaining patient's consent for the secondary use of data collected for other purposes is often 
uh, require uh, additional consents and especially if uh, required to comply with regulatory requirements for obtaining uh, patient consent for participation in human medical research. Uh, of course, these uh, requirements are regulated on the government level and in Russian Federation we have uh, federal law on the fundamentals of protecting the health of citizens, establishing the uh, exclusive list of legal grounds for providing information uh, which will constitute medical confidentiality questions and uh, uh, how we can operate on the consents of the citizen or their legal representatives. So the only way to use data <clears throat> for research purpose without the consent of the citizen in our country is when research activities can be considered as uh, uh, <clears throat> quality and safety control of medical activities. It should be taken into account that such a study can be considered a controlled study and uh, that the boundary between the study and the quality control uh, exercises uh, can be quite blurred and uh, there is no clear guidance all on the difference from this too. In practice, so to distinguish between research and quality control, one can check whether the results can be generalized to other institutions. And uh, it's necessary to take into account that the intention to publish and result doesn't mean research activities. In most jurisdictions, uh, the use of for is the use and the processing of anonymous data are not prohibited. Most often the use of this type of data is allowed if it is anonymized in accordance with accepted standards. When using such data, uh, please be aware that in some jurisdictions genomic information is uh, considered that uh, it's a way to identify a person. Moreover, researchers continue to look for new ways to identify individuals in databases that were previously uh, regarded as de-identified. As a, as a consequence, the idea that de-identification is a sufficient basis for the use of data rises and uh, it is ethically controversial. In some cases and jurisdictions, researchers have the opportunity to waive consent requirements. In this case, the study must meet the following criteria. Waiver of consent requirements or will consist of the study must uh, pose minimal risk to participants and the study shouldn't be successfully conducted if consent was uh, required. Uh, withdrawal of consent will not uh, adversely affect the rights or well-being of patients. Participants will be informed of their participation at a later date, if appropriate. The refusal of the requirement of voluntary informed consent raises a number of ethical conflicts, which include, uh, in many cases, many uh, theoretical and uh, uh, persons who are dealing with biological data are concerned that uh, using inconsistent data 
undermines trust and uh, show disrespect and uh, this question is less explored in uh, how potential participants view the trade-off between two patients preferences some surveys show that potential research participants want to consent uh, to the use of their data other surveys show high levels of support for research uses of their data. At the same time, it's necessary to understand very well that the mandatory requirements uh, of the informed consent can lead to a reduction in the number of study participants, which in turn will significantly reduce the amount of data available to the research and make the study less objective. Another ethical concern is the strong tendency to leave consistent data in research repositories without taking into account population imbalances, uh, rural residents, uh, national minorities, and so on. Of course, uh, we don't have any alternatives and other ways uh, to demonstrate respect for the rights of research of participants. Nowadays, uh, wearing Warnings are increasingly being heard about the ethical problem called therapeutic fallacy or therapeutic misconception. The term, term was originally used in the context of randomized controlled trials, but it's now widely used by sociologists, neuroscientists and clinical researchers. Support therapeutics fallacy is to deny the possibility that participation in clinical research may have serious disadvantages due to the nature of the research process itself. Essentially, the problem of therapeutic misconception is that the research participant may be misled, in, misled into not understanding the difference between the goals of the study and the provision of medical care. Medical issues uh, here will be that information required to the uh, it's required to study participants. They may be still a duty to provide additional warnings about the research. Sharing information about a study may be uh, contrary to the principles of doing good for the patient. So, uh, as a return of personal results to research participants, data mining will use artificial intelligence uh, technologies that can discover important information in the data regarding the research participants. This raises the ethical issue of returning personal res results to research participants. Some researchers believe that uh, return of uh, personal results is not required because they, there is a clear boundary between research and clinical care which means that it's uh, no uh, it's not for a patient to use this data another approach is uh, permissive it's uh, uh, proposed belief that uh, if a research participant want to obtain any information that has been discovered about him during the examination of his samples or data, he has the right to receive this information. That's uh, he should be uh, so he should be provided with any results obtained here. This approach requires personal communication uh, to the participant of uh, all relative information discoveries during the study. 
Proponents of this position claim that this should be done on the basis of one of the basic ethical research principles, namely respect for the patient and his autonomy. All information is uh, transferable because people differ in what information they may consider important or relevant. The problem with the approach are clear. The results obtained during the study may be incorrect or not uh, uh, ready for interpretation with the patient. Some research findings may not lead to action. Poorly defined or unverified research information uh, instead of minimizing risk can cause harm to the patient. At the same time, a potentially wide range of information make it possible to agree on these risks. Position between these two extremes may be more plausible, but uh, there are a range of views on where exactly to draw the line. The duty to return at least some results is to maximize benefit analytically and clinically uh, it should be reliable to the patient and uh, it should provide significant medical impact and uh, it should create an opportunity to take an action to treat to mitigate some problems or prevent exposure to some uh, hazards results that shouldn't be returned uh, on the basis to minimize harm, uh, uncertainty or lack of interpretation for these results, invalid results, uh, and when we understand that we can inflict some harm with these results. Uh, there is intermediate gray area between these two categories of results. And of course, there are a huge number of uh, practical questions about what to include in each category as well as what to do with the gray area results. So it's necessary to return those results uh, that would maximize the benefit for the patient and these results include those that can be considered analytically and clinically reliable and in addition results that suggest significant medical impact must be returned and in general this view requires that the all findings that may make it possible to take action to treat mitigate or prevent exposure should be uh, provided and uh, of course it's quite not easy to understand which one is what. a potential solution to regulatory problems can be found in the concept of a learning health system artificial intelligence research and in particular the collection of data needed for research presents a difficult trade-off between fully informed consent and the ability to conduct valid, representative, scientifically and medically relevant research. For secondary uses of data collected for clinical or public health purposes, it may sometimes be difficult to obtain voluntary informed consent and for the use of data from research repositories, it's usually uh, virtually impossible to obtain consent for every use of this data. This requires enhanced consent, which closely approximates patient consent to medical interventions. The possibility that research result may need to be communicated to the participant of the individual on the individual basis further uh, implicates the issue of informed consent. The starting point for each consent is difference between research and medical care. 
However, we know that some research isn't aimed at creating new drug or treatment methods, but at improving some aspects of medical care. Such quality assessment and improvement studies aim to help patients during these processes. The Western literature, they are called research of medical practice. When a facility makes a, a commitment to systematically conduct these types of research using all of its data and clinical care practices uh, as a way to improve care in general, it sometimes calls this learning healthcare system. Main type of uh, medical care research will be comparative study of treatment effectiveness and the purpose of such studies is to determine which treatment options within the standard is the best. Finding personalized treatment is also a valid goal. The purpose of the study is to determine which treatment options within the standard are best suited for certain groups of patients. Institutes of Medicine has uh, defined uh, institutions to embed the core medical practice that's a national, natural outcome and the product of healthcare process and leads to continuous improvement in care. And uh, uh, the traditional line between clinical practice and research could be somewhere in this area. Each patient is a research participant whose data provides additional knowledge for the studies. Continuous learning improves patient care, requires fine-tuning of systems to learn from patient data and to translate learning into improved patient care. The key of both uh, feedback loops with the intelligent system uh, artificial intelligence is likely to play a critical role in both data-driven learning and the development of methods for translating new knowledge into change practice. Continuous learning improves patient care, requires fine-tuning of systems to learn from patient data and to translate learning into improved patient care. The key to boost Feedback loops is to aim at knowledge, identify and synthesize evidence to solve clinical problems. For example, systematic reviews of evidence, clinical practice, guidance, and so on. Measuring performance and creating a feedback loop for learning and improvement also is crucial here. For example, patient registries, electronic medical records could be used while we are providing medical practice. Application of knowledge is a process of providing assistance, for example, clinical decision support systems, clinical pathways, and so on. An ethical framework for a learning healthcare system has so uh, developed as an alternative to the report-based research ethics paradigm. Belmont and uh, other ethical frameworks are based on the recognition of a set of obligations or responsibilities undertaken by various stakeholders in the learning healthcare system. Principles for respect for people and uh, including of commitment to represent the rights and dignity of patients. Principle to do good and uh, to uh, and they are reflected in these uh, principles. 
commitment to provide optimal care for every patient, duty to avoid imposing non-clinical risks and burdens, commitment to improve clinical care through education, as well as principles of justice or the duty to eliminate and reduce unjust inequalities in healthcare system. Commitment to respect doctor's judgment and in, if it's patient's responsibility to contribute to the accumulation of knowledge, especially when little risk or effort is involved, it's also important. Uh, transfer the benefits will improve outcomes for these patients and the, for the whole population in general. For all its advantages, the concept of a learning healthcare system doesn't provide the details of the trade-offs we described earlier. How to balance the responsibilities placed on participants and the obligations assumed by researcher. For example, consent as a way to demonstrate respect for rights, with the principles of fairness and the principle of not inflicting harm. It's a form that extends the voluntary concern consent to low-risk activities that improve patient care and is the best form for the consent. Patients and participants are willing to consent, uh, but they are required to provide the fruits of the research. Surveys show that the vast majority of patients and the public would be willing to sign a consent from the data if the data is needed to conduct a study. So for today it's all. Thank you very much for your time.